Oh, hey, folks, how you doing? This is Paul. Uh, good early morning to you. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning on this uh, Sunday morning, and I am at the last outpost of humanity in um, Florida right now. I am right at the tip of the Everglades. Um, if you take this road where this subdivision is, if you take it west... It goes for exactly three quarters of a mile. And then there's some sort of construction out there for something. What it is, I don't know. But it doesn't go any further. So what we're seeing here is... Um, we're actually seeing... Sorry, folks. I don't want these people to know what I'm doing here. Um, this is a subdivision. Um, you have an unusual person that you're listening to right now. Because... Although I am not communist or communist leaning, um, I do understand what happens with the long-term effects of having subdivisions. Subdivisions encourage, in my opinion, hatred of the higher class. That's my feeling on it. Uh, and it encourages this kind of step up in society. Because as you know, they're very strict. They do not allow people in there. You can't canvas in there for this and that. And it's getting real bad uh, because um, <clears throat> in some, uh, some ways it's real bad. Uh, these places all have homeowners associations and they are now making rules. For example, if you want to go ahead and cut a yard in one of these places, um, you may have to have battery-powered equipment. They're getting to the point where they are creating their own sub-society. And if you have blowers that they deem are too loud, then you're going to have to use an electric blower, et cetera, et cetera. This is all part of this. So, of course, you have some evil aspect to this. I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry. I know a lot of you get really mad at, at me about this. But to be fair... I'm not completely communist in my leanings because they're nice people. Generally speaking, they're nice people. That's not to say all these places are. I just worked at a place yesterday where the, 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 the people could walk by. It just, it, it, they're just awful. This place is actually very nice. Now, what am I out here talking to you about? Well, I've been busy doing um, golf disc videos, but I'm so much more. Uh, <laughs> So what I wanted to do is I haven't come out and said my piece in a long, long time. And I will this morning. Ukraine is not going well, folks. It's a money pit. And it is taking um, hundreds of thousands of lives um, for both Russia and Ukraine. And on top of that, there's who knows how many wounded. Ukraine, right? Excuse me, folks, I'm sorry. That's what happens when uh, you get these. I never got these before. These are hot and spicy little beef sticks. And they're hot as hell. But breakfast of champions, what can I tell you? My thoughts this morning are going to be on our country's future. We're throwing away all of our money on a losing cause, which is Ukraine. Um, I know a lot of you won't like to hear that because you're sub fuck zombies. You're not even a zombie. It's offensive to call, you know, a zombie equivalent of you. My subs excluded, of course. Of course, thank you, number 77. Now, folks, I started looking at this yesterday. Um, what do we have? Do you think we have a combat ready force? I, I'm asking you that. I don't have any inside knowledge. Please don't think I'm privy to anything uh, deep into the military. But I ask you, do you think we're ready to go to war? If Russia decided to just 
take part of Alaska. Just send some men in there and take a piece of Alaska or Aleutian Islands or whatever it is. Do you think the United States could really do anything about, well, we have the 714th Parachute Brigade. All right, well, whatever. That's what I've been told. And that 714th Parachute Brigade, do they do it without high heels? Uh, uh, or do they have adapted their pumps to land with their parachutes? I mean, I know I'm being a smart ass here, folks, but God damn it. What the fuck? So let me guess. Uh, we're going to have 15% pump wearers that like to slip into something a little bit more comfy. And they're off time. In the military now? Is that what we're going to have? And we're going to have an X amount of Latino recruits? Folks, I've been working at the other complex. And I'm telling you right now, as far as I can tell, and this has been for about the last year, maybe almost the last year, I've noticed it a lot as of recently. Uber Eats has been taken over by Latinos. That's that's all. That's the best uh, conjecture I can make on it. The reason I tell you that is because I'm seeing them come in. They have to check in through the guard gates. They can't count to ten. They can't count to anything. They they don't know how to say. American numbers or English numbers. And then you wonder why we have such a strong disdain about these people. It's not right. You could never go into another country and be taken seriously uh, not knowing uh, at least some ability to speak their language or at least know the numbers. Folks, it shocked me. I, uh, I have to get the address that the people are going to. I said, what's the address? And they don't speak in English. No, 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 no English. No English. Okay. It can, just tell me the numbers. You don't have to say 7962. All you have to do is tell me, you know, 7, 6. Give me the numbers. It's not just one time, folks. It's not just one time this happened. I'm seeing this with these Uber drivers and DoorDash, but particularly Uber Eats. What does that mean? It means that you're a fuckhole fuck zombie. That's what it means. You don't care about yourself. You don't care about this country. Well, yes, I do care about this country. We want to be real good and give everybody an opportunity to take over the language and hijack the language. Of course. You're stupid fuck zombies. If you don't fuck, then you're just a zombie. But again, it's offensive to zombies. You're not even qualifying as a zombie. You're something less than human. At least zombies were human at one time. So what are we having here? We're going to get 15% cross-dressers? Is that what we're going to have in the military? And then we're going to have a certain amount of Latinos, many of which can't even count to 10? Is this what uh, you folks envision 2024 to be like? Really? Come down here to South Florida. Go to parts of Texas. And you'll see what we're telling you. All this garbage. They have drones that can look for miles for people coming into this border, invading the border. They don't want to do it. Because the Democrats want the votes. And the Republicans are wealthy. And they can exploit them to increase their wealth. That's essentially what it is. You'll never have an end to that. And then some fucking idiot uh, Cheshire cat will come out, just like in Alice in Wonderland. You know how the cat used to come out and smile, and then it used to say something uh, semi-relevant to what was going on in a, in a kind of an odd way, and then kind of disappear, and you can only see his smiling teeth and his mouth, and then it would, that would disappear? That's Rand Paul. 
Rand Paul comes out and it's his job to come out. And when something preposterous is happening like this, like this forced garbage, which of course is a fuck zombie, you know that that wasn't forced, of course, because you're fuckhole zombies, but we won't get into it. He was the only one really that I saw in uh, these uh, bunch of whores up there in that group that came out and said, but he was just a Cheshire cat. He just came out and said, you know, like in Alice in Wonderland, it says, if you go, the Cheshire, I'm, I'm imitating the Cheshire cat now. If you go on the right side, you will meet a hatter. He's absolutely mad, right? If you go to the left, you, or whatever it was, it was a no win. It was all bizarre. So it's his job to come out and do the Cheshire Cat routine, Rand Paul. He comes out, talks about how bizarre it is, makes his little uh, wave that nobody, everybody knows the truth and they don't want to look at it. 800-pound gorilla in the room. And then he just fades off and then that little smile kind of dims off. Then we don't see Rand Paul anymore. Then he goes back to Kentucky or wherever the hell he's from and gets beat up on his lawnmower. His neighbor was a hardcore doctor leftist, leftist doctor who beat the living hell out of him. He, he uh, punched him real hard in the sternum and uh, he had to be hospitalized because Rand Paul put too much garbage uh, debris too close to the doctors, um, the hardcore leftists, who was a hardcore very successful, introduced a type of surgery or surgery device, which is um, hailed as a miracle, this guy. And uh, they never did anything to him. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? If they did something, it wasn't very much. So I'm looking now. We're throwing away money. We realize that Zelensky, the leader of Ukraine... For you fuck idiots. Look, I don't have anything personally against Zelensky. In case a lot of you didn't know it, he's a Russian speaker. He's a native Russian speaker. He has learned the Ukrainian dialect. He was, he's a multimillionaire. He has a $40 million spread down here in Miami. He's got a spread up in the Hamptons in Long Island, New York. And his whole job, he was an actor, and his whole a, a, a comedic actor and a comedian. What the, what do you expect? Where did you think this was going to go? Hmm? Do, do you think Ukraine was going to go about as good as it was going to get? Is that is that joke that Zelensky said about playing the piano with his penis? That was about as good as it got. Okay. So, I can't even imagine how our troops are going to fare if really called into service for something real serious, like maybe Russia going, and I'll tell you what I'm very fearful of. I'm fearful for the, for the, for the EU because it's being held together by Germany. And if you had three, four, or five hypersonic missiles, which are not nuclear. They're just hypersonic. They're extremely difficult to stop, if not impossible, because they travel so fast. Uh, what, what would happen to the European Union? What would happen to them if Mercedes-Benz Lost all production facilities with a strike from a, a hypersonic missile. What if they hit two or three of the production facilities and took out everything with toss flamethrowers or with um, cluster munitions? What would happen? I don't know. But I know one thing. The EU would be in extreme danger of falling apart. And what the United States would do, I haven't a clue, really. 
expect Xi, the leader of China, to put pressure on the Philippines and on Taiwan. Now, is that to say that he's going to do something? I don't know. But if he puts the impression out that he's going to do something and it appears serious, the United States is going to have to send carriers. They're sending nuclear subs right now. But the nuclear subs aren't going to be able to stop an amphibious landing or things like this. Uh, well, it might. They've got missiles on them, but they are I don't even know what they could do. I don't think that they could stop a genuine effort by China to make real serious problems in, um, in that Pacific region. So what, are we, what will we have to do? Throw another carrier or two over there? We've got two over there in Israel. Folks, I want to make this clear. I do not get a boner for Muslims. I find their society somewhat sickening. I, I, I'm just telling you straight out, the idea of women being so subservient to men in the manner that they are is distasteful, uh, and that's an understatement to me. However, that's their culture, and it's been that culture for thousands of years. Thousands, not a millennia, many millennia. And they have their own thing. And we have our things that are just as distasteful for them, like women running around in something that looks to them like a brassiere and a pair of underwear. And it's bizarre to them as well. So don't think, if you go to my channel, don't think I, I'm some sort of a... Um, a person in the corner of the Muslims. I'm not. However, we cannot have people, babies, women, pregnant women, women, older people, and men being uh tortured and moved from their areas of where they live. Some people are sick. They can't move. Some people, whatever, for whatever the reasons. And yet, you fuck zombies, I'm sorry, sub-fuck zombies, you can't understand one thing from another. Well, they're given a chance to leave. Oh, oh, Jews, and we're good Jews, and we're with Israel, and uh, American and I got a Jewish friend, and we're fucking fuck zombies. That's when you have to use your head with comparative reasoning or anything else. But you can't. Because you got friends that are Jewish, and they're real good from Israel, they're real good, they're, they're my friends, we even families are on a picnic together. Fucking stupid fucking morons. You have to be able to do deductive reasoning, analytical thinking, and you're, none of you are capable of it. Maybe my 77 people are, but you're fuckhole zombies, sub-zombies. Sorry about that. I'm offending the zombies here. You can't turn people into liquid red mist and severed body parts and watch these people screaming from buildings that are trapped in there while their families go there and can do nothing. Folks, this is the saddest thing. I don't care if it's Muslims or Filipino Ita, which are living thousands of years behind the Filipinos that out there in the mountains. They're human beings and we need to stop this and if you don't think that this has to be stopped, then you're simply a min, you're one of the minions of Satan. And you can like me or dislike me. I don't care. I don't make any money on this channel. I tell you honestly the way I feel. You are just simply doing the work of Satan. Because I don't care if you're trying to do it for peace on earth can't do that to women and children and babies. Why? No, but uh, Israel told them about it. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. 
you're not going to get away with it. You know why? These are called optics. You understand? These are called optics. They're optical aids. The optics of what Israel is doing is absolutely horrendous and vile. And people are seeing it around the world. And what will happen is if, uh, first of all, it's not going to happen, and I'll explain to you why, and we're going to cut this video off. I'm just bringing you up to speed on what the, what's happening right now, because the Western media is not telling you what's going on truthfully. In the history of mankind, aside from natural events, there's never been a movement of two million people from one place to another caused by a military campaign or whatever you want to call it. It's never happened before. Even in the days of Genghis Khan. Not that quickly. So these fuckholes are taking the credit for that. And they're going to wind up, in my opinion, they're going to wind up paying one way or another. All right? So I'm sorry about that. But they're shitheads. And they're going to wind up paying. That's my opinion. It's not a threat. It's not anything else. I'm just telling you. You can't do that. Now, if it does continue, Jewish people will not be able to set foot literally outside of their homes. Eventually. Eventually. They won't be able to come from Israel and do anything. Because the people are going to figure out the callous nature of what they're doing. Now, Aside from that, let's move on. What they're not telling you is that there's a group called Hezbollah. Everybody knows about Hamas. But Hezbollah is coming from a different area than Gaza. It's further up and getting toward Iran. Netanyahu, yesterday I heard it with my own three ears threatened to turn Libya, I believe it was Libya, into Gaza. In other words, uh, bomb it into uh, non-existence. You wanted this to spread, right? You want this to turn into a world war. After all, we got all the people wearing pumps and nice gowns and beautiful pantsuits in, in the U.S. military and people who can't count to 10 or any a part thereof. And then the rest of this filth here that we've got probably in the military. They don't care. They only care about themselves. Any honor? No, not my opinion. Not surprised. Frankly, I'm sorry, folks. I know I sound like a real terrible person. But I try to tell you the truth as I see it. Hezbollah has many, I'm sure, of something called M9 rockets. And these rock M8s, M8s are M9s, and they are bad. These aren't the little ones like firecrackers, like they've been uh, shooting into, uh, you, know, these, um, you know, these PVC pipes that they stick in gunpowder and then send them off. That's not what these are. These are serious munitions, capable of serious detonation, like leveling a building. I saw them yesterday. Of course, I didn't see them on the U.S. channels, because they don't want you to know, because you're sub fuck zombies, and that's the way they want it. Sorry to tell you, that's fact. They don't want you to know what I'm telling you right now. That's all the reason you need to be on this channel, and why Joe Rogan and all the rest of this garbage, you should be here. Not with Joe Rogan. Just barely made it. Just barely made it. He had the covert scam. And uh, he went on all those medicine. I had the scam too. I was sick for six weeks. But I got over it. And I walked 7, 8, 10, 12 miles a day during it. And I had to take NyQuil and DayQuil and all this other stuff. So terrible, terrible stuff with him. Um, we won't get into it.
Hezbollah is doing significant damage to Israel, Israel's army. They are taking out barracks and other things. And folks, if you are so dim-witted that you don't think that the Arab world is going to finally come together and put an end to what's going on right now, you're fooling yourself. The Arab people are not going to allow this. They're just not going to. Yeah, but Joe Biden, Joe Biden says. Mm, I see. What else? Well, Netanyahu says he's going to turn Libya into a, a parking lot. Yeah, what else? Well, they got the M9 rockets that are starting to bust up our military groove over there from the IDF. Well, what do you want me to tell you? It's going to get worse. You want to get the high-heeled uh, soldiers over there? If they can slip into a comfortable set of pumps? Hmm? I mean, are you people crazy? Do you see what's happening? It, if you told me that I would be one of the smartest people in the world right now, I would have laughed at you when I was 9 years old or 21 years old. But nobody tells you this. Nobody is telling you what's going on. And I keep up with the news all the time. Not CNBC or NBC or Fox News. That, that garbage. Garbage. All owned by the same source. To make you believe what they want to make you believe. <sighs> Folks, we are in such trouble. Really, truly. I have never seen it like this in my life. I mean, we've seen it where we've had illegal immigration. But we but now it's becoming an institution. You know what I mean? You know you understand the difference? It's like it's just like an institution now. And it can't be anything good, folks. Well, I gotta close on that border by building a wall. They climb over the wall. You can't make a wall too close to the water over there at the Rio Grande and all the rest of it. Just to close this out, Eisenhower, General Eisenhower, in the early 50s, was, you can read his memoirs, he was shocked at the callous nature of the farmers that were taking in, American farmers that were taking in Mexican help back in the early 50s. And he was shocked because there was no end to their greed of the farmers at that time, according to him. And he was surprised at how callous and easy that they had a time of hiring thousands of them to make reap benefit and rewards of their, of their farms. And Eisenhower knew that it was wrong and that it would lead to something very bad. And he put a stop to it. It was called Operation Wet. And I can't say it. But that was, the, it was Operation, okay? And what he did was he told those people to stay put and do not come back over here into this country for work. When they were caught, they made a giant roundup of them and they took them right back to the border, drove somewhere there by the border and they dropped off the people very humanely back into Mexico. And they were told, don't come back in here again. They did, they came back again. They came back uh, around nine months later or seven months later and Eisenhower didn't fool around one bit. You know what he did to the people? He rounded them up in literal school buses, in literal buses. He rounded them up and they drove to the Yucatan Peninsula and they dropped these Mexicans off at uh, men, women, and children. Some of them died. Some of them died because they were in the Yucatan Peninsula all the way down deep down into Mexico and they had to find their way back to their homes. What do you want me to tell you?
This is historical fact. They didn't come to the border after that. They didn't come to the United States after that. The 60s, it didn't start again until uh, Javits or whatever the hell that guy's name, the congressman, said it's unfair for poor people to not come to this country. Well, maybe so, but they took it to the extreme. So there you have it. Okay? I tell you history. Something's got to be done, folks. You're not going to be able to have a functioning society with people who can't even forget about counting to 10, but any part thereof. It's absolutely horrendous what we're going through. Aside from the vampires over there in the Middle East, the minions of, of uh, Satan, and uh, the Ukraine um, penis piano player who's on his way out now. They're replacing him with somebody else. I don't have anything against the guy. He's a funny comedian. He's a multimillionaire. Has several spreads. Miami, New York. I don't have anything against him, but he ain't going to be able to cut the mustard anymore. Folks, take care, and I will talk to you another time. Goodbye.